So let's see. Let's see. It should be recording now. So I'm just going to go over that really quickly for the people who missed this. I'm Nadia Colburn. It's November 8th. Welcome to the meditation and writing session. Um, I think we're just going to begin and I'll tell you more as we, as we go. You can use this time for any of your own writing. So if you have a project that you're already working on, you can use the prompts to help you with a project you already have, or you can ignore the prompts. This is really about listening to yourself and doing what's right for you. So let's begin and let's go. I'm going to lead a short meditation, give you a writing prompt, give you some time to write, and then do that again three times. And then at the end, the last 15 minutes, we'll come back together and there'll be some time to ask questions, share work, um, and follow up. Take a nice, long, deep breath. Relax your shoulders. Try to focus your energy on your breath without judgment. I'm gonna lead you in a four part breath. So we're gonna inhale for a count of four. We're gonna hold it for four. We're gonna exhale for four. And we're gonna hold it out for four. So go at your own pace, inhaling for four, holding for four, exhaling for four, and holding for four. This keeps your mind occupied on the breath. If your mind starts to wander, bring it back to the breath. Finish your next round of breath. And if you're sitting in a place where you can see the sky, my invitation, my prompt for you is to look at the sky and to write from the sky. If you're not sitting in a place where you can see the sky, close your eyes for a moment and see if there's a time that you remember seeing the sky. And you might, even if you can see this sky, you might prefer to close your eyes and remember seeing the sky. And so my questions for you that I'm inviting you to write from are, where are you standing? What's around you? How does the sky look? Either at this moment or in your imagination, describe it in as much detail as possible. What else is happening? And how do you feel? And if you didn't get all of that, don't worry about it. Just you're going to receive what you're meant to receive. And I can put some of those questions in the chat as well.
So the idea is that you're writing about the sky. If you are writing something else, you might even want to bring the sky into whatever it else is that you're writing about. And see how the perspective opens up by focusing your attention on the sky. As you're writing, stay focused also on your breath. See if you can stay connected to the breath even as you're writing. You might want to ask, are there any questions you have for the sky or any questions that come up when you're focusing your attention on this big perspective? And is there anything that you want to tell the sky? 
Is there anything that you know that you want to put down on the paper? Staying connected as you're writing still to your body and your breath. We're going to come to another meditation in a minute or so. So take one more minute finishing up this part of the writing and we'll come back together. So that's just a way to do something a little bit different, to shift our perspective, to be aware in a slightly different way. I don't know about you all, but I feel like I'm bombarded by a lot of out, outer noise and a lot of important things are happening, but those external things that then really set the discourse, they set what I'm paying attention to and I wanna make sure that I'm also mindful of other things that I can bring my attention to really thinking about where am I, how am I spending my time, where am I putting my attention and how am I uh, nourishing myself so that I can nourish others in that process so I don't feel overwhelmed and I'm still tapping into my creative energy which is connected to so much, such a larger creative energy. So um, if you enjoy that, writing prompt, you can always go back to that one after this next one or go back to whatever it was that you came to your own project. I'm going to lead us in another little meditation and offer another prompt. In this meditation, I invite you to say internally, breathing in, I know I am here. Breathing out, I smile. So that you have a little mantra that you're saying to yourself as you're breathing and aware of the breath. Breathing in, I know I am here. Breathing out, I smile. 
and just follow at your own pace. If the mind wanders, try to bring it back to the breath into that mantra. I want to read to you from Audre Lorde. I sent this out in an email, so some of you may have read this, um, and you may have read this before. This was an essay that Audre Lorde wrote in, um, I believe it was 1977. She had a false uh, breast cancer diagnosis, and she, you know, confronted her own mortality. And in the face of that, she really asked herself, what's really important for me to do and say? And as she says here, she is a black lesbian feminist poet, um, speaking in her own voice and speaking in the voice um, of, of in representing groups of people whose voices were not often heard. And whatever group of kind of identity politics we are, we all have within us voices that haven't been heard and haven't been fully spoken. So this is really an invitation to you to listen to those voices, to listen to the things that want to be said and give yourself a little bit of time and protected space to, to write from those spaces with, with permission and, and with a gentle tenderness and, um, and also gentle fierceness, if that's you know possible. <laughs> so this is what I'd be worried about. In becoming forcibly and essentially aware of my mortality, what I most regretted were my silences. Of what had I ever been afraid? To question or to speak as I believed could have meant pain or death, but we all hurt in so many different ways all the time and pain will either change or end. I was going to die, if not sooner than later, whether or not I had ever spoken myself. My silences had not protected me. Your silence will not protect you. What are the words you do not yet have? What are the tyrannies you swallow day by day and attempt to make your own until you was sicken and die of them still in silence? Perhaps for some of you here today, I am the face of one of your fears because I am woman, because I am black, because I am a lesbian, because I am myself, a black woman warrior poet doing my work. Come to ask you, are you doing yours? So it's a kind of invitation. What is your work? And perhaps your work is to go back to the sky and look at the sky again, or to sit with your breath and write from your breath. But really an invitation. How often are we asked to speak from our silences in a safe place? And nobody needs to read what you write on the page. You can tear it up and throw it in the garbage when you're done. You're completely safe with whatever you write on the page. And try to keep that big perspective 
of, of sky as you're writing and have fun with it. And as you're writing, as always, stay connected to the breath and to the body.
staying connected to the breath and to the body. And take one more minute to finish up what you're working on and we'll come back together. As always, you can come back to your writing and what you were just working on after another short meditation. And if you're writing at home, you might want to try this also to set a timer for yourself and actually make yourself stop and have a little meditation and then go back to what you're writing. And it can really um, bring you to a new level of insight and also efficiency with your writing so that you can really hone in on exactly what it is that you want to be saying and have more direct access to your own voice with less of the static that's going on normally around us. So I think these times so much call on us to really listen to ourselves and um, stay true to our own true, true north. So let's do uh, another meditation. I'm going to guide you in a little um, breath meditation where we're actually following the breath in the body. So I'll guide you a little bit and then you can do it on your own. So take a nice long deep breath in and feel the air entering your nostrils. And you're gonna to have to be breathing at your own pace here, because I can't quite keep up with each person as at a different pace. So I want you to be aware as you're breathing that air entering your nostrils and traveling down into your body, and then back up and out. And see if you can bring your mindful attention to that central channel that the breath runs along and how it's always moving. See if you can have a steady flow of your breath so it doesn't get stuck anywhere. Or if it does get stuck, just bring some mindful attention to the place that the breath is stuck. And see if you can then get the flow moving with a little bit more ease. So that we're really mindful of that process of transformation that's taking place within us through the breath all the time. Whether we're aware of it or not, that transformation is always happening within us through that central channel.
And of course, the breath goes into all parts of the body, but for now, focus on that central channel along your spine. Running down through the lungs into the belly and then back up and out. I'm going to read you this poem by Whitman, and you can still follow your breath even as I'm reading. Just open your ears. When I heard the learned astronomer. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I sitting heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical moist night air and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. So you can continue working on anything that you were working on before. If you want to write from this poem, I'm going to give you a few words you can work with. A few words from the poem, and those words are astronomer, mystical, silence, divide. And I'm going to give you three kind of random words also if you want to just bring a little bit of humor into or unexpected into what you're writing. So those words are popcorn, magenta, and giggle. And you can choose to do whatever you want with any of the prompts that I've given you. Make them your own. And stay connected to the breath and to the body as you're writing. and have a good time with it.
Stay connected to the breath and to the body. Connect with the breath in the body and take another minute or so to finish up what you're working on. This last little bit of time that you're 
with your writing or if you want to come back into a meditation, give yourself the support to really listen to yourself and honor this process that you've been in. So I encourage you all to continue working on whatever you started writing. Um, take time for yourself later today or tomorrow or over the weekend and sit down, do a little meditation, go to your writing. It's really important to put some boundaries around the writing time so that you turn off your phones and you're really there. And uh, I hope that you felt there was a different quality to the experience after the meditation. Um, I at least feel more centered and I can hear my own voice a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna unmute you all. Maybe you choose something that's more neutral that nobody has got. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna unmute you all. Um, <laughs> uh, cancel. Hey, hold on here a sec. Mute all, continue. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to allow you to unmute yourselves one by one. Otherwise, it's going to get, you know, people's conversations that they're not intending will come onto the call. Um, so, and if you don't know how to do that, you can chat with me and let me know. But I'm just going to kind of uh, open it up to all of you. If you want to ask any questions, if you want to share your experience of what this was like, um, if you want to read a little bit of what you wrote, we don't have that much time. So if you read something, just keep, maybe read just a segment of something, but it's nice to come together and share a little bit. Anyone want to unmute yourself? Do you know how to do that? You go to the bottom um, left corner and there's a mute. Otherwise, you can chat with me and I can unmute you. Maybe not, there are too many people here. Um, so I'm gonna, if, if, I'm gonna just give one more uh, minute and I'm going to ask you, maybe if you could be quiet, if I unmute you all, I'll just try one more time. Marita, Marita un, this is Jamie, and Marita unmuted herself, it looks like, so she was before me. Okay, great. And just speak up if you've unmuted yourself. Go for it. Um, we're all here listening. Well, this is Jamie, and it's good to be back again. Um, it's been a whirlwind with elections. I was a tech judge and electric judge. So it was good to meditate and to be back. And I found that the sky meditation brought me back to the story that I'm writing right now. And the middle one didn't have anything to do with, but the sky and my story floated back into the last meditation. So it was really cool to see the synchronicity of that. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And if you can kind of speak to when um, Align Your Story is going to start again, I would love to know what month that's going to start. Great. Well, Align Your Story is my online course. And hi, Jamie. It's so great to hear your voice, have you here. Um, Align Your Story is my online course with meditation, writing, uh, readings, yoga, and a lot more, and an amazing community. And once you enroll, you have lifetime access. But I go through the course week by week. Um, once a year with students, and I'm going to do that again this winter, probably starting, I have some out of country travel, so I'm trying to figure out what that, when that's going to be, but I'll probably start um, in, in February. Um, and I'm also planning some, to offer some things before that, so I'm planning to offer a five-day meditation challenge, Ooh. and then actually create a 30-day meditation and writing challenge. So it'll be five days of meditation and writing, and then if you like that, then there's will be a not very high price um, 
course, which is 30 days of meditation and writing with different prompts. So you can start your day with that or do it at any time during the day. Um, and, and then you can actually, there's a way that you can use it for the 12 months and use it for every day of the year. So, Thank you. Yeah. I'll mute myself and let somebody talk. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And uh, this is Marguerite and so wonderful. And I, I would assume that you send out some information when you're planning on doing that. And um, this was just such a lovely break from, I wrote a little bit about the politics out there wanting to come into my door and out of my radio and out of my TV all the time, you know, and, and to, to really to really um, combine the mindfulness and the, medita the mindfulness meditation with the, with the writing. It's, it's kind of uh, really, it's very sweet, very sweet. Uh, I'd love to do more of it. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. Um, it is really amazing what just 15 minutes can, can shift things, yeah. you know, into a different sense of peace yeah. and quiet and calm. And, you know, as I said, like, as you said, as we all know, there's so much happening right now that's, and a lot of it is disturbing, but we can also forget the amazing things around us. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to come back and choose what we want to focus on when and listen to our voices and be inspired by poems and other people. It's, um, I'm always surprised what comes for me, even if I do the mm -hmm. same meditation multiple times. So I'll also send out a recording and you might want to practice with the recording and see, you know, even doing the same mm -hmm. prompts, you'll have a different experience. Of course. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Hi, Nadia. This is Martin. Hi. Thank you. Um, I loved the prompt and it brought me to or took me back to when I was a little girl <laughs> under the sky on the road from my grandmother's house to my cousin's house. And those feelings of being happy, particularly in this climate, <laughs> um, energetic, curious, engaged, contented, that I was loved, that I was kind, that I had a loving family, all that I was grateful for. And then I wrote about how I got away from that. And but yet all of that is there within me, within all of us. And I can go back to that in the sky. So I am really grateful for you pointing out that something, the most obvious, that we are under that sky. And those beautiful thoughts and memories, we can access them at any time, particularly in this stormy, you know, time of uncertainty and the sky in the, on that road from my grandmother's house imprinted in my heart memories that I can grasp, hold on to and call out at any time. Yeah. And I think in the meditation that made it, you know, it, it's so, it it's, can be accessible just in a breath. And that is good to hold on to um, as we go forward in our lives with all the uncertainty. Thank you. It was wonderful. I really oh, thank you. loved yeah. it. Thank you so much. And something that you said that I was thinking, but I don't think I had articulated, you know, is that when we look at the sky and the sky is so big, but we can also go inward to the vastness of our inner lives as well. You know, both the outer universe that we look through through the binoculars and that inner universe are, are infinite and um, hold so many so much mystery and treasure and wonder so thank yeah. you thank you and i just want to say also that we can just ask the sky or ask our hearts and it can take us there yes that's what we're doing really in these moments we're asking we're giving ourselves permission and it was wonderful <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Hello, Nadia. Can you oh, hear yes. me? Yes. Okay. Um, this is Andre. Hi. Hello. I want to say, first of all, I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. The prompts were really great. And I'm tackling a very big project, and I often get lost. And 
kind of had a question more on the technical side, maybe to help me with my writing. As we went through the different steps, the last phase with the sort of totally out of the box words brought me to a place of writing that was very surrealistic, that I was actually really having fun with it, but I have a tendency to get lost in those spaces. So I was wondering if you had tips or other prompts that might help me bring this back maybe to the original questions or if I should just go with it. <laughs> well, we all have, you know, like the yin and the yang and some people go more in one direction. Some people go more in the other direction. We want to find that balance. So if you know that you're likely to like wander off into that kind of playful land, then you know, okay, well, you want to bring it back as well. Although, you know, maybe you want to stay, maybe you want to keep wandering, who knows what you'll discover. But you might, along with the meditation that you kind of set your timer and say, okay, I'm going to write for 15 minutes and I'm going to come back, I'm going to do a meditation. And as I write, I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask myself, what do I really want to say? What's mm -hmm. really important to me? What's my main point here? Just those three simple questions and keep coming back to them. And I can even write those down. What do I really want to say? What's my main point here? Not in a kind of essay way, like that you have to be on a five topic essay, but listening to your heart so you're not getting drawn off into a place that you don't want to go. And maybe what you really want to say, maybe your point is to play, to discover. Maybe you don't know, it's a voyage of discovery, but maybe you do. And I think if you just go back and ask yourself, you'll be on the right track just to remember. And you have that insight already. Oh, you sometimes wander off and you want to come back. So just set up for yourself a little timer where you just go back and ask those questions. Right. Great. Thank you. I mean, it's a great tip for me to come back to just asking questions or, I mean, I could even ask myself the question, how does this tie in with that and continue the exploration somehow? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have questions? We just have a few more minutes. Hi, Nadia. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. It's Tawana. Hi, so good to see you here. <laughs> good to see you. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I guess first, I, I kind of woke up today um, with the thought of unworthiness on my mind. And so that's kind of what I combined with the sky today. And it, it was really good for me. Um, but, and that kind of leads to what's been going on, um, in, in my family as well. Um, right before you sent out that poem, um, by, is it Audre Lourdes? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my cousin has sent a video, um, on Facebook about, um, being gay and being a black female and her challenges with the black church. And it was like right before you had sent that. And it was like, and it just kind of all tied in about, you know, she's, she's finding her way and she's speaking out despite all of the rejection and ridicule she's received mm -hmm. from family and from, um, the church itself. And I just thought it's just amazing that, you know, back in 77, you know, someone had the, that Andre had this, you know, um, enough worthiness to speak up and to say, you know, all that she had to say. So everything just seems so perfect. Yeah, well, I hope you forward that essay to your cousin. It's really powerful. And one thing that Audre Lorde also talks about in that essay, I didn't have time to put it all in, but she talks about gaining strength from the women who have spoken out, um, her sisters, her friends, um, women of her generation, women of past generations, but there's a community that she feels she's not speaking alone. She's held by a community of other strong women who have broken silences and spoken their truth. And so, you know, we all have those feelings of unworthiness, especially when we are not embraced by our community. 
That's a really painful thing. So to find the communities that will support us, that will listen to us, and to just keep looking and knowing that they're out there, yeah. and not to you know, leave one community for the other, but to, unless you have to, right? But, but, but really to embrace the communities that embrace you, know that they're out there, that there are people who will listen, and to find that sisterhood. And sometimes we do that in writing, right? Like, wow, this woman, she's not alive anymore, but she's my sister. Yeah where she spoke and I'm speaking and maybe my words will reach someone I will never even meet. But there's that connection and that mutual support. And the mutual support also in our own mutual vulnerability because we are vulnerable and we do feel unworthy, you know, and to sit with that and let really be, you know, brave to, to voice those feelings as well, which we are doing. So, so thank you so much. Thank you. Ramona, thank you so much uh, to tie unworthiness and finding one's voice, you know, having the courage. I love that. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I just love that. <laughs> yeah. And to some level, like we all are silenced by the outside, but we're also silenced by the inside. You know, this question of worthiness, unworthiness, how can we embrace ourselves? How can we really take care and be gentle and loving. And that's something that we all need to work on, including me. I mean, I do this work because I've had to do this work <laughs> because it's been a, it's, it's a constant journey, right? To, to embrace ourselves and to, um, to just keep growing a little bit and with, with, uh, with compassion and knowing that sometimes the people who are most loud and most self-confidence seeming often are plagued by unworthiness right and that's just like a harsh armor to protect that self that's vulnerable so when we can be honest about our vulnerability we can be so much more compassionate for others as well so thank you all. Thank you, Tawana. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, as I said, I will send out information. I will send out a recording of this session. Um, I'll send out information about some upcoming events that I have. Um, my Align Your Story class, which is the most robust of my offerings, is always available to sign up for it. Um, you can do it in a self-paced manner. You can do it with one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Um, and then I'll also be, you know, have more free events coming up. Um, and you can practice with this recording that you'll get whenever you want at home. So um, keep, keep listening to yourself. Keep listening to your sisters and brothers. Um, keep showing up. Keep taking breaks when you need to take breaks. Protect yourself. Set, you know, safe boundaries. And um, you can always reach out to me. I'm really easy to find. Um, my address, my email address is Nadia Colburn at gmail.com. And my website is Nadia Colburn.com. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all again, to working with you, to hearing your writing, to uh, getting to know you more. So have a wonderful afternoon. And uh, thank you again for being here with me and together. Thank you, Nadia. Thank, thank you. Thanks a million. Bye-bye.